Okay, so let's continue here with skeletal muscle. When you look at this picture, here we can see bone. Here we see a tendon. So what part of the bone is this? If you remember from osteology, right, this part of the bone is called the periosteum. That's the outer part of the bone. The inner part of the bone was called the endosteum. So muscles attached to bone by way of tendons. When we look at the microscopic part, we see we have these small muscle cells, these muscle fibers. And what surrounds each muscle fiber is an endomysium, endomysium. And you get a bunch of these little endomysiums grouped together here. This is called a fascicle and a fascicle and a fascicle. All of these here, this entire structure here is called a fascicle. And that fascicle is surrounded by a perimysium. So this layer going around here and going around here, this re is referred to as perimysium. So this is a fascicle, this is a fascicle, this is a fascicle, this is a fascicle. Each of these going around here, this is an endomysium, endomysium, endomysium. So you get a bunch of these endomysiums grouped together. This entire structure is a fascicle. This layer that makes the fascicle is called a perimysium. Then you get a bunch of these fascicles, fascicles, surrounded by perimysium. And the layer that covers outside of here, that's called the epimysium. Okay. Then we have fascia, which is this thin, translucent layer. Uh, for those of you that are carnivores, if you've ever had, let's say, chicken, a piece of chicken or a, dr a drumstick or something, when you peel off the skin, right, skin, the epidermis, then you could see between and underneath the skin and superficial to the muscle, there's a thin translucent layer. That thin translucent layer is called fascia. And it surrounds muscles. It surrounds organs, nerves, blood vessels. Everything has fascia. And it's really an amazing type of structure that intertwines and makes up an amazing matrix of the human body. And it helps explain why a person can stub their toe and then get lower back pain from it or get a migraine headache the next day. Or be a squinter, you overuse the frontalis muscle going over the scalp to the occipitalis, to the traps, down the back to the erector spinae, to the glutes, to the hamstrings, to the calf, underneath the foot and get arch pain or great toe pain from squinting all day. It is that continuum of fascia. And it is an incredible uh, anatomical science that a lot of body workers use, whether they be uh, doctors of chiropractic or doctors of osteopathy, even some advanced massage therapists have advanced training in uh, fascial work. So again, when we look at this, we could see the same structures here. We could see from this cross section, we have the endomysium. We could see we have a perimysium around it. This is a fascicle, another fascicle, another muscle fascicle. And then going around the outside all the way is the epimysium. Okay. So the skeletal muscles are made up of these individual cells called muscle fibers. And then each muscle fiber is surrounded by the endomysium. Then you get a group of these 10 to 100 muscle fibers surrounded by a perimysium. That's called a fascicle or muscle fascicle. Then you get a, mus a group of these muscle fascicles that are surrounded by the epimysium. And that helps to make the skeletal muscle. Has a continuum called the fascia and tendon. Then the tendon attaches to the bone so that when the muscle contracts and generates the tensile force, this part is not so elastic as this part, and it tugs on the bone. When muscles stretch beyond their anatomical limit, oftentimes the tendon tears, 
and then the muscle shrivels up. Okay, and then you lose the ability to contract the muscle and move a bone. Okay, sometimes tendons just stretch a little bit. We call those strains. Sprains with a P is where ligaments overstretch. Strains are when muscles and tendons overstretch. Now, when we talk about tendons, tendons can have two or three, right? In, in terms of the uh, biceps, biceps split into two tendons at its origin. Triceps have three, okay? Some tendons are broad and flat, like the biceps brachii. At its insertion, it is called the bicipital aponeurosis, the bicipital aponeurosis. When you look at the latissimus dorsi muscle, when you look at that back muscle, it's pretty wide. It originates on the uh, iliac crest, the sacrum, the lumbars, the lower six thoracic vertebrae, and because it's such a, a wide origin for the lower six lumbars uh, to the to the all I'm sorry for the lower six thoracics to the lower five lumbars and the sacrum and ilium that is a broad area. So when the muscle the latissimus dorsi originates there, they call it the thoracolumbar aponeurosis thoracolumbar because it originates on the thoracic spine and lumbar spine, aponeurosis, just broad, flat tendon. Okay, we already covered fascia. Going back to the last for a second, it's a back muscle because it, it, you could see it. It's a wide, wide muscle of the back, but its insertion is on the intertubercular groove or the bicipital groove, which is in front of the humerus. So it's a back muscle that ends up attaching to the front of the arm. And that's why it's a powerful shoulder extensor, a shoulder internal rotator, and a powerful shoulder adductor. Okay, when I come back, we will talk about the neuromuscular junction, the MJ.